Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting today, um, Tuesday, May 22nd. I'm being a little after 6.30. Thank you for your patience and getting the, getting the meeting started. Let's uh, start off in the way we always do with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. I'd uh, like to uh, welcome our newest member, Irfan. Welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Good to have you. Thank you. And uh, a shout out to uh, Mr. Sestari. I hope you're uh, watching us right now. How you doing out there? Bets on that one, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Just putting a PowerPoint together. <laughs> okay, <laughs> public forum. Residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there uh, anybody in the audience that uh, would like to come up? Yes. Come on up. Do I go here? Sure, right up. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's, there's only a limited amount of seats up here. So are you guys all together? Are you? This is the Blackthorn? Yes. So you're going to be the representative, you're going to be the one speaking for them? Well, if it's, we're not familiar with the process. Um, if we could limit it to two speakers, if I could have maybe four minutes and two minutes after that for the other one, would that work? Sure, yeah, we, yeah, we usually limit to people to about two minutes. And yeah, as long as it's not, not you know, continues to be repetitive, because sometimes you know, we have five or six people come up and say exactly the same thing. Sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks so much. And we could keep it really short depending on uh, what, what you guys are able and willing to do. So I'm Eric Krajewski from Nine Blackthorn Circle, and I appreciate this opportunity to address the selectmen. Um, I know it's a busy time for you guys. Congratulations to those who won yesterday. Um, and um, so we're asking for two things today. We're asking to get on the agenda for the Board of Selectmen for a future meeting so we can discuss our concerns about the trails and development around our neighborhood in greater detail. And more urgently, we're asking that you instruct or uh, ask the Trails Club to put on hold any cutting of trees for trails uh, in the area near Blackthorn Circle and Deer Run. Um, it's been our impression that the Trails Club has been um, fairly loose in moving forward with projects. And if a tree is cut down prematurely, it takes quite a bit of time to replace that. So we think that uh, a little bit of prevention is, or a little bit of a pause is worth a lot um, in this situation. So we're asking for two things, to be on the agenda in the future, to go in greater detail, and to put a hold on the cutting of trees for multi-use trails in the area. And I must say it's been an eye-opening experience learning about the various committees and processes over the last several months. Um, one thing we learned is that the Hopkinton Trails Club is not a formal committee and seems to have different rules and regulations to be governed by. Um, it was very difficult to understand what is being done, when, and under whose approval. Our understanding is that the Board of Selectmen are probably the only authority over the Trails Club as to what they may and may not do, um, except for if it's infringing on wetlands. So um, is that true? No. Okay. There are other, they have other governance that they must abide by? We can explain offline. Okay, and that can be a follow-up discussion, of course. Um, so thank you. So we sent an email to the selectmen this weekend outlining some of our concerns to help streamline the discussion today so you can make a determination on our, our request. Um, we consider the Trails Club plan for a multi-use path at the end of Deer Run um, to To be a uh, connector for the Echo Trail is our real concern. Uh, Peter Legoy of the Trails Club has said that that's his intent, that the Echo Trail would connect through Deer Run back into the trails that he plans to cut off of Deer Run into uh, eventually to Center Trail. And so is this something that's been, uh, not asking you to answer it, but our questions would be, is this something that's being done with the approval of the selectmen? Um, or is it being done kind of on his own initiative or on the club's initiative? It also seems uh, inconsistent. So first he told us the trail was going in for the benefit of the residents for connectivity. And then we were told, well, no, it has to go in for the, uh, 
the dog park because the police, the fire chief has requested dual access for safety vehicles. And then we checked with the fire chief and he said, no, I didn't say that. And then he's, then the story became, it was required to build the dog park. And then it eventually became, it was required to maintain the dog park to bring um, uh, uh, porta potties and refuse away from the facility. So um, given that the dog park is currently on hold, we discussed, we met with the dog park committee recently. We had a good discussion, uh, I believe, they're looking at ways of maybe changing their plan or also looking at alternative locations, but until that is done, it seems um, like the, any connecting trails in that area should also be put on hold. So um, there was also, if you look at the Echo Trail lot, there, was a, um, there were two new parking spots added to that today. Um, are you guys aware of that? We do. We don't usually go back and forth. But uh, I'll, 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 I'll it it said it was a, it was for questions too, so I didn't know. So, that's yeah, so well, I'm gonna assume, didn't, assume you didn't. I'm gonna assume you didn't know. I'm gonna assume you didn't know it, okay. and you can refute me on that. But I drove back that trail today to the parking spots, and if there are two cars parked there and a third one comes in, what will happen? They'll have to back out onto Granite Street. So it, it, it puzzles me under what authority parking spots are being put in there. Um, it doesn't seem prudent, but it, it, but it seems like um, put it in first and beg for forgiveness later. That's how it seems to me. It, 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 um, they, they were approved to be put in when we put no parking on Granite Street. There's no parking on Granite Street, that, that whole end. And so that's why there were, there were two parking spaces put, okay. on, put on that one. But that, okay. All right. Okay, so it was approved, and uh, okay, there will that probably was, be accidents. Was What's that? That was that was that was that was. Mr. Chair, yes. if I could interject for a sec, please. So obviously, the folks have some concerns about what's going on in their area, in their neighborhood. Tonight's not the night to deliberate back and forth how we're going to play this out or how it should play out. Uh, I did not know there was two parks, parking spots out there. We may have voted on that. I just don't remember. So whatever. Great. Um, my suggestion would be that. Uh, Eric and perhaps others uh, get together with the town manager's office and I think a trails committee representative could come in there and sit down and sort it out and then come back to the board once Mr. Kamal has a chance to get into it with his team to figure out where we are, is everything in line with current bylaws and decisions made at town meeting and elsewhere, and where are we going together uh, with this whole area. Um, and then we can kind of get into the details, but yeah. I, I think we're, we're up against right. our time client line here right now. Um, but obviously there's concern. We need to listen to those concerns. We get it. So let's get to okay. Mr. Kamala and figure it out from there. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And for the record, it's the Trails Club, not the Trails Committee. We don't I, have a Trails Committee. I, I meant Trails Club. Yeah. And if I said the wrong thing, that just illustrates the confusion that we have. There are three different trails organizations in town, and it's yeah. kind of hard to keep them straight. It's very confusing. Yeah, we're trying to work with that one also. Um, okay. So I appreciate the time if we could just have one other person talk and then we'll and then yeah we yeah we, we really are up against the clock thank you because we have a, we have public hearings today thank you i'll be very brief uh, my name is jamie vranca i'm from six blackthorn circle um so my husband and i moved to hopkinton in 2012 and we chose the neighborhood because it's small contained and safe for our family um so we have a two and a half year old we're expecting two more in august and there's a bunch of other little children in the neighborhood. Um, so my biggest concern is the increase in traffic and um, the safety of the neighborhood. When we have people parking on Deer Run to go swimming and fishing in Echo Lake, um, they tend to peel around the neighborhood on their way turning around and leaving. And so it, it takes away from the safety of the neighborhood. And we know there's signs there that say not to do that, but they're going with fishing poles and towels. Um, so we're concerned about the increased traffic and if it becomes a connector, all the people parking along the road and making it not safe for my daughter or sons to learn how to ride their bike and visit the other kids in the neighborhood because there's a bunch of other little kids, which is awesome. I love the neighborhood so much. Um, be quick. Um, so other than our little kids that are in the neighborhood, we also have two young adults 
that are children of my neighbors behind me who are differently abled and have some special needs and are a little more vulnerable. So increased um, foot traffic and car traffic is potentially a risk for them. So we just like there to be a clear planning process so that they can be safe because the whole neighborhood looks out for them too. They're important to our community. Um, Try to make sure I'm really quick. So we're just looking for ways to protect our neighborhood. Um, one of the previous plans had talked about having ADA access from Deer Run into the dog park area, but we thought there, like another plan had it from 192 Hayden Row. So we're just looking for some clarification, which it sounds like we're going to be able to meet with the right people going forward. Um, and finally, just getting in and out of Deer Run onto Granite Street is pretty treacherous with all the high traffic. Um, and there's been a bunch of close calls as people are going faster as a cut through. It's really popular to go through there during rush hour and after school. So we're just nervous about the traffic too and the danger at that intersection. Um, and I know one of my neighbors, Patty Kreski, sent an email to the police chief with some of those questions and I think they were summarized in the email to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if I just may interject one thing. Um, if there are people going in with towels to go swimming, I don't know about the fishing, but Echo Lake is a Milford public water resource. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't believe anybody should be swimming in there. Yeah. So that probably, if you are aware of that, should be reported. I'm not sure whether that would be to the town of Milford, but you're not. I mean, right. So if that's the illegal use of Echo Lake. If there's someone in particular that we should contact when we see it, I'd be happy to make the calls. Um, I mean. <laughs> I mean, oh, you're please. in Hawkinton, but it's Milford's right. water resource, so I'm not sure. But I mean, that should be brought to the authorities because not supposed to be swimming. Because there will be resource. like one to six cars parked right along um, the east side of Deer Run, close to Granite Street, making the turn into Deer Run dangerous as well. I see the chief back in there. Mr. Chair, I would suggest mm -hmm. that we table for this evening. We do yes. put this on the agenda for a future meeting after this group has met with the town manager's office and we get some real facts and a plan to go forward. So we're getting, we could get in a dialogue here for half an hour. So I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, hang on a sec, please. So Mr. Chair, can we do that? Absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry, this gentleman had a question. Yes. Can you also instruct the Trails Committee to not cut any more trails in that area? Until those we can't to take any action tonight because this was not on our agenda, okay? That's why we're getting ahead of ourselves here a little bit and on a slippery slope. So you need to get with the town manager's office as soon as you can and we'll figure this out. But we cannot make a decision tonight that would be illegal. May I? When, may we just get clarification for the residents of if there's a violation of the public water resource, what the appropriate authority would be for them? Would that be? And I know the chief is back there. Whether he could mention whether, since it's happening in Hopkinton, Hopkinton should be notified or Milford. This can be figured out, Claire. I'll find. Right. You don't have to do this right now. Yeah, yeah that's not. No. Okay. I, Easy uh, answer. Hopefully. Is there anybody else from the audience that has? Uh, any questions or issues? All right, with that, we'll move on. <coughs> Special Officer Appointments, 640. Excellent, thank you. Board of Sutton will consider approving the appointment of the following dispatches as Special Officers Jesse Miller, Miller and Claudia Patricia Rodas. <coughs> Chief, come on up. <coughs> How are you? How are you doing? Uh, both uh, uh, dispatches have been working for the department over a year. That's where we usually uh, allow them to become special officers, uh, specifically for details, traffic details only. They are not armed. They are just uh, working uh, road jobs, as we've done uh, with most of our dispatches now. And then. Uh, we're looking forward to getting a few few out there because there's been a real uptick in details and road work, and we certainly uh, need to fill those to keep things running smooth. Excellent. Thanks, Steve. Any questions for the chief? So you highly recommend? Yes, Mr. Starr. All good. All set? All set? All set. Beautiful. The chair requests a motion to appoint Jesse Mil Miller and Claudia Patricia Rodas as special officers to terms expiring June 30th, 2021. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
motion carries. First motion. There we go. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> okay. Until we get to the marathon fund request. <laughs> Uh, consent agenda, board minutes, board, um, anybody have any, any uh, issues? Okay, well, board minutes, marathon fund request, the uh, board will consider approving two marathon fund requests for uh, $3,350.91 of Friends of Hopkins for buying volunteer t-shirts, buying restrooms, Giant Castle Children's Entertainment for the Hopkins Family Day on September 15, 2018. Um, and then there's a, uh, a breakdown of the, uh, of the costs. Um, we also have um, $15.75 for Hopkins High School Girls Varsity Lacrosse for buying 30, 35 sweatpants with Hopkins Lacrosse written on them for the HS, HHS Girls Lacrosse team. Anybody want to break anything out? I don't think we need to break anything out. I don't need to break anything out on this. Okay. Oh, good. I request a motion to approve the consent agenda items. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carried. Okay. Okay. The, uh, here we have a joint planning board. Oh, do, do we have to do it? Let's do it, yeah. It's uh, 8 till 7. We have all the members here. It's not. A, it's not a public hearing per se. I think they need five more minutes to have to go back. We got some. Okay, I glasses. <laughs> well, that's a reasonable request. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, these, are, these are the ones out of my toolbox. I know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's the uh, official bills? Now the men. Now we have to yeah. Um, Tom Images report, you want to do that? Do you, do you, do you, do you want to do part of it? Any, anything you got? Yes. Um, final touches have been made to the Town Hall renovation project. Wonderful. Um, we I have indicated to our current landlord that our term of the lease will end end of June. Uh, our goal is uh, to a cut a plan where we will phase the transition back to town hall. So will we have everybody back in town hall? Or is there, because I remember we had some issues with um, files and some of those other things that... Uh, we're working on that issue. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. 80 South Street was very convenient, I gotta say. For you. <laughs> For me too. I enjoy it. A lot of good, lot of good parking. I, I know that uh, B. McMullen loved it. That's good. <laughs> um, anything else? Nope. Okay. We have some reports? Board invites? Anybody? So let's start with some of them. So we get, we, I will just, give a We're just trying number. to waste some time. Absolutely right no. I have a number of liaison reports tonight. Um, Center School Reuse Advisory Team, and they will be meeting again tomorrow night. But uh, last month, the team met with the school committee to hear some of their needs. Um, they are very interested in looking at use of a partial use of the center school for um, some of their adult students. As you know, the town uh, gives educational services to certain students up to age 22 mm -hmm. um, who have certain needs. And um, so there's a lot of factors at the center school that would meet their program very nicely and not allow them to uh, expand some of their services. So there's great school committee interest. Um, sort of funny they're turning the school over to us and then they seem to want it, want it back. <laughs> um, so that's Center School Advisory Team. Um, a bit of an update working with the Historical Commission. Uh, the Commission met with the uh, school committee last week and received approval for, they've been doing a series of history signs through the town and um, have learned that uh, on the site of the Marathon School 
was a very noted educator by the name of Emily Poulsen, who was instrumental in teaching the blind. And it turns out that she was a teacher of Helen Keller's famous teacher, Annie Sullivan. So she is the link to the lovely Helen Keller photograph that the library has had, and no one quite knew how we came to own that. Um, she also established the children's reading room in the Hopkinton Public Library and gave over 200 books to the, to the library. So the school committee has approved a very lovely sign that will go on the site of Marathon School telling the story of Emily Poulsen who lived on the site of the new Marathon Elementary School. So that's really nice news. Uh, and a, a Historic District Commission, Mass Historical Commission came to town last week and gave an afternoon, uh, morning and afternoon seminar and walk of the Historic District to discuss um, administration of the districts and factors to consider if the town were to look at expansion of the district as was recommended back in the 80s by Mass Historical Commission. So no decision yet on that, but there may be some exploration going on with that. And I have one last update with the Cemetery Commission that our former selectman Len Holden donated to the town, a very lovely plaque. It is an engraving of the Gettysburg Address. It was um, found in an old home in Hopkinton when it was torn down years ago. And he um, has had this plaque recast for the town by the same um, artisan, Jeff Boccaccio, who did the work on the fountain in town. And this uh, being the 150 year anniversary of the founding of Memorial Day and 155 years since the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, Mike Whalen will be mounting that and we will have that installed at the Gettysburg uh, Soldiers Mound in Mount Auburn uh, as a very nice fitting tribute um, to the soldiers who served and so we'll look forward to having that uh, available to see on Memorial Day. So some nice new pieces of uh, historical uh, information coming to town. Excellent. So the only liaison report I have is on the Marathon School, on the Elementary School Building Committee. Um, we had a meeting the other day. Uh, it was a great meeting. Afterwards, I took a walk and saw all the progress. And it's nice to monitor the progress as it goes along. But you know, in, in construction, once you start putting sheetrock up, it really makes it look like it's moving along. Um, great. Uh, this is a phenomenal school. It, it really is. A, it, it's an unbelievable school. So um, they are ahead of schedule. They're all set. We are going to have a ribbon cutting uh, ceremony on June 9th from 1 to 3. I'm sorry, from 1 to 3.30, uh, where we would um, hope that as many families from town can come up, whether you're uh, going to be able to be using the school or plan on using the school down the road or, or whatnot and come see what your tax dollars are doing. So uh, Saturday, June 9 from 1 p.m. till 3.30 and um, it'll be a uh, it'll be a nice nice uh, thing. There's going to be some catering. I don't know if there's catering trucks, plural. I know there's an ice cream catering truck that's that's coming and, uh, and we'll see what else is there. So uh, the principal did make a note to let us know that there will be no ice cream eaten in the school. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's where we stand now. So that's all I have for liaison reports. Mr. Mr. Chair, the Fields Committee uh, is moving forward following town meeting and uh, is engaging the contractor to get all the pre-construction work done and lined up. Uh, funding comes in later, obviously, uh, but they are mobilizing now to get things in order. Uh, I also attended the um, uh, farewell for Dr. McLeod, uh, the superintendent who's retiring at the end of the year. And uh, there's a nice gathering there of a couple of us in attendance. And a lot of great things said about Dr. McLeod has done a great job for our schools and our community over the years. And also that evening, to Mrs. Wright's point, was at the school committee meeting honoring two members that are also long-term uh, volunteers, or they were long-term volunteers, and uh, had a nice gathering there. Representative Dykema was in both places too and had some nice proclamations uh, for our colleagues. Uh, and the presentation on the signage to Mrs. Wright's point was really cool and I think it's very fitting that it goes over there somewhere, so good for them. Um, and that is all I have for liaison. And um, 
Uh, mine two are, well, one of them is the Marathon Fund, which we just, we just voted on. Those are uh, the two things to help out the schools. And, and uh, the other one was um, that same evening that we had the retirements um, was the, um, the closing of the uh, uh, 122nd Marathon, uh, the, the gathering. And it was a, it was a great group. Um, Teddy Bruski was there. We honored Phil Powers for, for um, his work and being a veteran. Actually, Representative Dykeman was at, it was at that one. She pulled three that day. Um, <laughs> that was a good one. But uh, I think, do we, do we have enough members now? Yeah, okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. Uh, you guys want to just move up to, to some of the front seats if you want to? Yeah, yeah. Whatever's comfortable. Why don't we look that way so we don't put our, put our backs to the audience? Yeah. It's a sold out house tonight. <laughs> Okay, so um, it, uh, it looks like we're down to, um, uh, to Gary, yeah, Gary Trendo and she Sheila Rangovitz. Um, is uh, Sheila here? And uh, is Gary here? Okay, good. Excellent. If um, I may, Mr. Chair? Yes. Just for administrative purposes. I realize the planning board convened earlier. I just want to make sure that this meeting has been called to order since you have a quorum. We adjourned this meeting, but so, we should exactly. make a motion to open the joint session. Okay. Uh, uh, motion to open the joint session. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Excellent. All right. Mr. So, Chair. Yes. I move that we appoint Gary Trendell to fill the open seat on the planning board until the next election cycle when the seat will be up for election. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? I would love to hear from Mr. Trendell who's made it through this process. Well, it could be publicly go over it if the other candidates are not here. Or so Mr. Wisemantle um, rescinded his application today. And so did so yeah. did one of our members. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Sheila Rangovitz just was not able to attend, or right. she presented also? No, she was not able to attend. Right. So, Gary, would you like to come up and introduce yourself? Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Run. <laughs> come up quickly or introduce me? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Gary Trendle. Um, Hi, Gary. <laughs> hello. Um, I've been in Hopkinson for uh, almost 11 years with my wife and three kids. Um, had interest in planning board for, for some time now. Um, I think it's a, something that's a near and dear to my heart, just as a former civil engineer. Um, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity for the planning board, um, particularly when it comes to uh, long-term vision for the town. Um, other things that are important to me, um, you know, I think that it's, it's uh, I'd love to get to a point where there's more to Hopkinton than just the schools. Um, and I think that uh, hopefully the planning board through implementation of the master plan, that's something that they can achieve. Um, it is, uh, it's something that uh, is important to me just in terms of setting a, an example for my children. Um, I think all of you all uh, give back to the community. I think set an example of citizenship, that's something that's important to me. Um, and uh, hope to have your support uh, for the planning board. Thank you very much. Okay, with that, I think we're ready for a vote. All those in favor? Oh. Right, I'm sorry, yes. Oh, I just wanted to say that I hope that, um, I know Sheila Rangelitz couldn't come tonight, but I hope she will consider applying for another spot. Many spots open up all the time. And I'd like to add that it's always good to have candidates and ask for candidates and elections and appointed. And uh, we're a popular board, and it's good to see the interest from the town and uh, citizens like Gary, who's run before and who's stayed involved before all the past years. So. I'd also like to add that I met Gary in the uh, in the process of the election for the planning board last year. I was very impressed with everything that uh, she had to say. Uh, I think we became friends uh, throughout throughout the process. 
been very impressed with uh, your involvement throughout the past year and your work with the, with the trails committee and showing up at the planning board meetings. I'm very impressed with you. Thank you. Thanks. I would also do. Oh. Go ahead, Mia. Thank you. Um, just add that uh, I became a fan of Mr. Jandels when I was uh, running against him. Um, <laughs> and uh, he has a very positive, very proactive, very informed approach. He's very articulate. He's very involved. He does his homework. And he's going to be an amazing add to the Planning Board team. We're really lucky to have him. I, I did want to add as well. Um, that Mr. Trendell, when he ran last year, he did his homework. He learned a lot about the planning board, um, and he has continued to watch the planning board this year uh, with particular in, uh, interest uh, to an application that was happening, you know, in, in his backyard and in the process. Really learned the process, the ins and outs, the pitfalls, the limitations, the opportunities. Um, so I think he has really had a good chance to take a close look and understand what's involved in the position. Um, quite frankly, I think he's probably even more qualified this year than he was last year, having lived through the process as well as um, you know, competed for the position. So um, I, I think he will make an excellent uh, New member, uh, Ms. Rangavin, I noticed has some very good financial expertise, and I would hope that, uh, as we've all been through the last budget year, we know the town has lots of needs, and that's one of them. So, good point. I would just like to mirror the sentiment that comes across the tables, uh, welcoming you and thanking you for stepping up, as well as everybody else that has brought their hat to the ring, and um, we seem to be unified coming in let's stay that way and get the job done in the most um communicative and um within the scope of our purview um, that we can possibly be um, putting aside our own differences of whether it be politics or whether it be our own agendas and, and work towards the common goal of the town. So, very good. Thank you. All set. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Am I saying a few words? No. That's <laughs> 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 enough. Thank you, Gary. Motion to adjourn the joint session. Second. Motion to adjourn the joint session. Seconded. All those in favor of joining, uh, adjourning this, the joint session, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming. See you Take care. Thank you. Yeah. See you later. Young fella. Nice pen. You, of course. Nice. See you later. Thanks, Cliff. Okay, so um, do we want to take a, a brief intermission? Well, for the. Uh, An hour. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a public hearing at 8 p.m., correct? Yes. Yes. And what do we have left on the agenda tonight? Future much. board agenda items. Future board agenda items. And, and, items. and a reorganization of the board. And a reorganization. Why is couldn't we do the reorganization of the board? Is, <coughs> the board? Can is we there we more to the town manager's report? Did, that was it. That was it. We want to look at what else is there. <laughs> A temporary hiatus. <laughs> Abandoned. <laughs> we're going to take a break and then we can go to the hearing. Yeah. We can't move the hearing up before we can't move the hearing up. Why don't we take a break? Why don't we reorganize this? It's a rush. Let's not like we do that. It's not going to take an hour. <laughs> it's not going to take an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but then we're still going to have to take a break. We're still sitting around for an hour. Yeah, we're going to have to do that after the public hearing. Might as well do it before the public hearing. I'm, I'm in favor of that. Either way, we can have that. <laughs>
Because then we're going to be here till 10 o'clock. I mean, no. Why would we be here till 10 o'clock? No, no, we won't be here till 10 o'clock. Whatever you guys want to do. Let's just take, let's take a 40 minute, uh, 50 minute break. Okay. And we'll be right, we'll, we'll come back to, uh, to the public hearing. So we're going to kill the microphones, but we can't really. With our agenda, so that absolutely uh, we can get it done before, and as soon as we're done with the public hearing, we could just go home. But there's nothing, I and mean, we're still going to have to take a 40 minute break. We're still a 40 minute break. Yeah. Well, how about we just do the other items and then we see how much we 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 Okay, are we still on? We're no, still on. <laughs> Your mic's on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just kill the kid. Just kill for a while. So because yeah. we're assembled and because we adjourned, we cannot talk. Gotcha. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you. Sorry for the, um, the hiatus. Um, we, we have to hold off. We had to hold off on the public hearing until 8 p.m. Now, the hour being 8 p.m., the public hearing Hopkins Parent Teacher Association for the Entertainment Sunday License. The Board of Selectmen holds a public hearing on an entertainment Sunday license from Aaron Graziano on behalf of the HPTA for a Fiesta Shows Carnival to be held on Thursday, June 21st from 6 to 10 p.m., Friday, June 22nd, second from 6 to 10.30. Saturday, and uh, okay, I'll just, I won't read the entire thing there. Senior parking lot, staff parking lot, Hopkins High School, Knight and Hayden Row. Applicant has applied for an entertainment Sunday license for a single event, including recorded music, amplification system, automatic amusement devices. Admission fee will be charged. Uh, a license to operate amusement devices issued by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has been provided by Dean and Flynn of Fiesta Shows. Fiesta Shows has also applied for a Sunday license for public entertainment on Sunday. Ms. Graziano, please come on up. I'm bringing with me E.J. Flynn from Fiesta Shows. I can answer some of the more technical questions if there are any. Excellent. So we are looking to bring back the carnival again this year. It was a huge success last year. The HPTA made over $12,000. Um, years ago, the HPTA was fundraising and bringing in about 100000 to 125000 a year. And over the past couple of years, we had not been able to break the $100,000 mark. And the carnival last year allowed us to finally reach that goal of getting over 100000 and being able to provide some extra funding at the school. So we were really excited about that. And the feedback was all positive. I received numerous emails and texts from um, family members who just loved the event and um, whose kids appreciated it as well. And um, we did have a post meeting last year and everything went um, off without a hitch. There was no um, issues. The, the police had said there was no walk-ins or calls or complaints on site. So um, we, for those reasons, we were, felt like it was a good thing to bring back a um, great community event. And so that was what brings me here today. Excellent. Okay. Yes, sir. When is the last day of school this year? <clears throat> it is the Wednesday prior to the start of the carnival. So, so that'd be Wednesday the twentieth. Yep. I should know that for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always accused of not knowing what's going on. Uh, okay. So Wednesday the twentieth. So school's out. School's out. And then we start. Yep. Okay. We received an email, Mr. Chair, um, this week about. An individual that was part of this last year or not part of this last year I couldn't fully understand the email it came yep. from a citizen I don't know if it was a resident or just somebody in the world um, what was that email specific to was that not last year did that happen last year or not happen last year it did happen last year prior to the carnival that individual was only in town to pull the permit he I had no um, I worked with EJ and his dad Gene um, and then when the carnival began, they had an on-site general manager, Chris, who was my contact person. Um, that person was not was only in town to pull the permit and will not have any affiliation with the carnival um, this year either. 
So not pulling permits, not on site, not managing nothing. Yep. I mean, I don't know what all that happened because we're not here to judge those things, but yep. uh, that's not going to happen this year. Or yep. Not possible because he won't be involved. Is that correct? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Excellent. Uh, so, hi, Aaron. Hi. Um, I did have a, um, an abutter actually come to my house the other day and, and talk to me about um, an issue with, with this that was a little bit ongoing. I think you guys know about it. And I want to know what we can do proactively to try to mitigate it. Um, obviously, there's no smoking or tobacco use on school yep. grounds. So, what would happen are, are these employees for the carnival would cross the street and um, smoke their cigarettes or congregate, and it wouldn't just be at a certain time; it would be all the time. Mm -hmm. yep. And <clears throat> he said that he was picking five or six hundred cigarette butts a day up. Uh, family has a business that runs out a small business that runs out of their uh, yeah. their house um, notwithstanding the fact that he is you know <clears throat> he when he discussed this with me he said he's pro schools he's always been pro schools yeah. he has about 15 kids that went through the schools um, and but he just wants his concerns known <laughs> that <clears throat> You know, maybe we can mitigate a spot where, where these people will congregate, yep. uh, that they can't go there. Um, and uh, he also, one of his other questions was, he, he was wondering why, with all the neighbors right there, why the carnival itself couldn't be put on the middle school parking lot. Um, and uh, I said, the best I can do is I can bring it to you guys and, and, and find out if it's a space thing or if it's possible to put it or maybe some of the louder rides out there or, yep. or, or what. But he said, you know, it goes till 10 o'clock and he starts work at 5 a.m. and he's a light sleeper, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. So uh, those are a couple of things I just wanted to bring to you. So I definitely. Okay. Uh, I, um, I opened this meeting, uh, but I didn't officially open the meeting. So the chair will entertain a motion to open the public hearing for the um, Hopton Parent Teachers Association Entertainment Sunday License. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. I, I hope you did like a normal meeting. <laughs> Should I start over? No, I can't. <laughs> Please don't. Uh, I definitely think we can handle them, you know, finding another place to congregate. That's, yeah. that's an easy solution, absolutely. And um, the middle school, I, I did try so hard last year when looking for um, a location for this carnival to not have it on school grounds mm -hmm. because of a host of other, you know, schools and sure. was at the time last year was going to be um, in while it was going on. There's just not very many large parcels of land in our town that is you know, allows for a carnival and the middle school parking lot is significantly smaller. Mm -hmm. And because they do need to set up days prior to the opening of the carnival in order to allow the state to come in and permit, um, it would have to be set up during those few days of school. And the nice thing about the high school is that senior lot, the seniors are done and they're gone. Right. So that allows some open space for us to start setting up in order to, um, to, to get the carnival um, moving, but we did work with um, Fiesta Shows in discussing the rides that would be um, right there like facing the house. The so, go yeah. ahead. So, what we did last year, uh, one of the uh, teenage rides, the Freak Out, swings to a 105 degree pendulum, but probably goes, you know, 70 feet in the air. So, what we did is we removed that from that area and removed any high rides in, you know, so in that same spot we would put a tilt-a-whirl, um, if everyone's familiar with it, like a teacup ride. Yeah. So it's flat, it's on the ground, um, it's not, you know, flashy, noisy. Uh, so we moved, you know, that. So any any rides that have any height are going to the back parking lot altogether. So all the rides in the front area will be, um, you know, essentially ground uh, static rides. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So Mr. Chip, one related question? Yes. Thank you. Where are you locating the generators? Uh, there's two generators. Uh, one goes along the entrance side, going in and out of the high school. We moved it down about 60 more feet from where it was. It was closer to uh, the, the main road last year. So we moved that one an additional 60 feet further down into uh, 
you know, paid <coughs> towards the school, and then the second generator is in the other parking lot, um, you know, for the additional rides that are out back. So we're trying to be as cognizant as we can to the neighbors and the abutters, uh, because I don't think I don't think that the, the sentiment that I got from all the people that I've spoken to, there's no one in the world that's against this. Uh, it's just they just try to mitigate the the. Um, the amount of noise and things like that that, uh, that they can do to kind of maintain their normal lifestyle. Yep. I'm yeah. still not clear on the smoking question though. I mean, um, so if they can't go across the street or they won't go across the street to congregate, where would they go? I mean, they can't, could they go to the HCA? Can we set up a space there where we can a, make sure there's... It's a town. Uh, That's, isn't that town? That's so you can't difference. have you can't have uh, tobacco or cigarettes uh, on town property either. I don't think that I don't know about that. Okay, but I'm just wondering where, what's the plan? We're not going to do it across the street. Smoking ban, though. Um, I where think we could probably find something a little bit farther down. Maybe have a a, a, a home spot or something like that. Yeah, I think we just have to make a concerted effort. Yeah, yeah that's a fair. A that's a fair concern. Absolutely. Oh, I think it's yeah, absolutely legitimate. Yeah. A lot of us are very sensitive to secondhand smoke, and if it's wafting in the air by dozens of people constantly, and then yeah. they're dropping on the ground, that's kind of gross. So yeah. that would be a fair ask, I think, of the neighbors to make sure we sort that out. Agreed. Absolutely. So can we hear about that? Like, once you sort it out, can you let us know? Just what, it may not necessarily hold up what we're doing here tonight, but let's that'll be part of some kind of. Maybe. Yeah, sure. Okay. Mr. Nasrullah, um, I, I see that there was a, uh, an issue about uh, trailers yep. and sleeping in sleeping quarters. Yep. Um, has, have you made any progress there? Um, I think the, the idea was that they would sleep. So that on the, that's on the Irvine property. Behind there. We're supposed to be apartmenters, but apartmenters. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I think that, that that's a, a detail. I think that they're that um, they're working with the uh, town manager on right now, on trying to work out a workaround on that okay. on that yep. aspect of it. Yep, that will be resolved. At this point. Is that true, Mister? Yes. Sp Clara? Specifically, this is a zoning issue, mm -hmm. uh, and it's being handled through the zoning enforcement officer, who's the building inspector. Okay. Do you see it getting resolved? I believe so. Good. That would be another possible contingency to anything happening. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Anything else? No. That's right. Well, I I had the same concern as Mr. Nazarillo, but you know I understand that that's not really within our purview as long as we, as you said, set some kind of contingency that these couple issues be resolved in in some amicable manner. Um, you know, last year was the first time. It turned out to be a great success. It's turned out to be a wonderful fundraiser. Um, turned out the company works very well with the town. Um, so, you know, I, I have every reason to, to support this. And, and beyond the issue with the trailers, which I, I trust will be resolved with the appropriate authorities, the only other thing I really saw in the permitting um, comments was, you know, the simple request from the police that you work with them a month prior, which would be now, yep. mm -hmm. uh, to resolve those detail issues, which, which of course you are. So yep. um, really, I don't have anything uh, new that hasn't been addressed or that I'm not confident is going to be addressed. So um, I just hope it's a good success, and those little bugs that we had last year uh, will get worked out, so it'll be perfect this yep. year. Yes. So um, I feel like uh, Columbo. One last thing. <laughs> um, Ma'am. I brought, I brought an issue up last year regarding Corey's. Yep. And I want to know if, I guess I want to know what your process is to make sure that the Corey and Sawyer reports are submitted reviewed, vetted, and then someone, what your process is if you find someone with a dirty quarry sword. So last year those went through the school district, the um, admin office, and um, the Carnival Hut Company had agreed to give the police department everybody's social security numbers to do their own quarries, but what we realized was they have far more um, better process than, than we do because a lot of the people that work for the Carnival Company are out of state. Some come over from other countries annually and go through that vetting process as well. So they handed over all of the 
Um, go ahead. Yeah. No, so, um, you know, all the, per, per uh, you know, state statute, all, of, all our employees get Cori checked. Um, but the, when we supplied everything to the uh, police department, they're technically not supposed to run everyone's social security. So in talking with the police, what we've done is we're legally allowed to give them copies of everyone's queries and background checks. So last week when we met, um, all of that's being compiled of the employees that will be on site here. And probably, I think it's actually ready so that once the permit was done, that will be going to the police uh, you know, by Monday at the latest of next week. But that way they'll have multiple weeks to Take their time to you know go through if there's any one of question um, or concern that can be addressed uh, in a timely manner. So, who determines at what level a Cory or sorry when it comes back is dirty precludes someone from employment? We have re well, certainly as the employer, I you know I, I have that you know final say. We also have certain guidelines um, within the state statute for the, from the Department of Public Safety when it comes to amusement ride operation. Um, certainly, if there's additional concerns that the police department has, you know, those will be addressed also. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have minimums that, you know, must be maintained. And every single employee that comes through your, that, that gets a, one Corey. of your shirts that works for you. Has, has, has a Cory paper, has the Cory paper. What we do is two things that uh, what Aaron was alluding to is we do a Cory on every entity. The problem is if you reside in New Hampshire, one of the bad parts about the Cory program is it's only related to things that happened in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's not a nationwide search. So anyone that does not, any, any employee that we have that does not have a Massachusetts <coughs> residence, we also do a nationwide search on. So the police will get both, mm -hmm. um, you know, both information. And are you aware of the issue that, that I brought up about the Corys last year? I think, are you talking about um, Dr. McLeod flagging a few and just saying? No, no. So, uh, I used to work at the prisons, in the prison system, and there was a person that I worked with, one of my patients that was an inmate. Uh, so when, when you're sentenced to a sentence at a prison, it means you're sentenced, you're found guilty of a felony, and you're sentenced for something greater than five years. Um, so this person was on a particular block that would you know, I don't have access to his social security, but the specific block is for um, individuals that definitely would not only not pass a Cory, but definitely would not pass a Sorry. And he was working for you guys. So um, it was a, a red flag and I brought it up to the chief and the chief and I tried to work together and um, figure out what the guy's name was. But unfortunately, when you work in that environment, you yeah, that, that's to, a, you you know, for, from, from our standpoint, regardless of any state mandate, that would be a strict no um, on, on our part. So, you know, so I'll, I'll follow up with the chief actually just to get that name. And, and he doesn't have the name. Oh, okay. I mean, only because I, I wasn't aware of that from last year, but definitely, yeah. you know, I have, you know, young kids myself, so yeah. completely so get it. <laughs> in the environment there, you do your best to not know their names. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them went by nicknames. So I knew the guy's nickname. I tried to follow up with the <coughs> connections at the prison, but I couldn't get the name. So. Uh, but I did know that he was in the G1 block, which was a, a block that uh, specified in people that wouldn't uh, pass a, a sorry. Yeah, no, we specifically wouldn't want them. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm glad that the, um, the whole thing was a uh, financial success. And um, in, in, in the real world, there's no way it could have been done perfectly. And, and you know, as... as um, Ms. Wright was talking about, you know, it was the first year. And, um, you know, hopefully the second year we, we pick up on some of the things that, that weren't right on the first year. And then same thing, third year gets even better. You know, it's sort of like the, you know, the Timlin race that's been going on for a very long time. You know, there were issues to begin with, and now it runs up smoothly. And our 122nd running of the Boston Marathon, same thing. <laughs> Especially after the, with the additional um, uh, security, everything that had to happen a few years ago. And even that's, that's going a lot smoother. So I'm sure we can work out any of these details, and I hope we can. Okay, so 
Ms. Pearl? Yes. Yeah, just one last question. Um, is Fiesta Shows prepared to provide the photo ID badge um, as the police department has requested if that's not something you normally do? Uh, it is something we already do. Okay. Um, it's all ride operators by mass statute are required to wear them while working, but we do that for every employee. Okay. Um, the only exception that we have is our food operators don't wear them around their necks just from a food Same handling material. standpoint, sure. but they're in the booth. So if anyone right. wants to ask, they're, yep. they're there yep. to be proven. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. So at this point, do we uh, oh, should we open it up to the uh, public for any comments? Yes. Yes, I think that'd be, that would be appropriate. Is there anybody in the in the audience who would like to uh, make any comments to this? Oh, absolutely. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, no, 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 no. You're here. Come on up to the microphone. <clears throat> Just uh, please uh, introduce yourself so that the audience... Hi, I'm Carl Morningstar, uh, 93 Hayden Rose Street. I live directly across from this event. And I uh, do have a couple of questions just to start with. Um, uh, is town council here? No. No. Now, um, this is a public hearing, right? And right. I was supposed to receive notification uh, 10 days in advance, and I didn't. I got my notification on Friday the 18th for this meeting. So I wasn't really able to prepare much. Here's the envelope if you're curious. Okay, yeah. So my question for town council is if you approve this permit when the abutters weren't given adequate notice, is the permit valid? Okay, so hang on for one second. Yeah. So Mr. Chair, uh, yes. Mr. Kamal, can you comment on when notifications went out? I think we would have receipts of that, wouldn't we? We have the receipts. Here's the envelope. It was postmarked the 15th, I think. But it wasn't received till the 18th. Yeah, um, Mr. Morningstar, th thank you for raising that question. Um, the direct answer is that the board policy approved for reviewing these licenses does not uh, specify the 10 day requirement for public. Notices. But it is a, a Mass General Law 140 you're going with here, and also a, a, a Sunday license, Mass General. Uh, law 136, Sunday license, they do require notice. I, I can refer that question to town council. Well, that's why I asked the question to town council. Okay. May I have my envelope back, please? So, so the question becomes now, if it, if, if it was adequate notice, then fine, we can continue with my questions. But if it's not adequate notice, then, uh, and you approve a permit, um, <coughs> what are the ramifications of that? If you hold the event with a permit? That's not valid. Well, we could certainly prove a permit pending town council review and authorization to proceed. <coughs> um, or we could suspend issuing the permit until we get an answer from town council about whether we can proceed or not. Mm -hmm. Are you opposed to the permit being issued? I am opposed to the permit okay, being issued. Okay, let's get that on the table. Yeah. Why are you opposed to the permit being issued? Because this is an event uh, that is called a fundraiser, but it's a 10-day inconvenience and uh, uh, terrible uh, for the, na the neighbors. This is zone residential. This isn't zone commercial. There are a couple commercial properties in the school. And, and this event starts on Sunday night. The 18 wheelers come in. They're so big they can't even, they drive up on the curbs in, and get in. All day, uh, all day Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday they're setting up. Rides are clanging and banging, generators are running, and, and these carnival workers are running, are walking back and forth to Parmiter. Back and forth to Parmiter all day, smoking, walking back and forth to Parmiter. Standing in front of my house, standing in front of the superintendent's house. And, and the real problem is, this is a permit that's being granted to the PTA. Because frankly, everyone's afraid to oppose the PTA. <coughs> Do you think if, it's $12,000, that's what they raised. $12,000, you mentioned the Timlin race, great event, big supporter. You know the event that's coming up this coming week, um, Touch a Truck? Starts at 11, ends at 4, they raise $25,000. It's not 10 days of aggravation for the community. This is lazy fundraising. They, they trade their nonprofit status to the school for a permit. They give the permit to a, a, a company, and the company must raise a lot more money than $12,000. It's a commercial venture. It's lazy fundraising. It's not when you think of fundraising, the idea of Timlin is fundraising. 
Touch a truck is fundraising. Bake sales, swaps, those, that's fundraising. It requires some effort by the, by the uh, nonprofit organization. So I ask this question. The, the carnival company comes to the school and says, we'll give you $15,000 if you'll approve a permit. That's a good cause, right? The schools need more money. $15,000 I'm going to give you. Would that permit get approved? Would it even be considered? Now remember, I was Commissioner of Parks and Rec. I, run, I started Hopkins lacrosse and I started Hopkins football. And I couldn't get school permits to hold practices at the school. All right? So we know the only reason that this permit is being granted and considered is because everybody's afraid of the PTA. The school's afraid of the PTA. The school board's afraid of the PTA. And anybody who's elected, what do they say? In order to get elected in town, you've got to have the PTA and Hopkins and Soccer supporting you. If you don't have those two, you're not going to get elected. Okay? So let's call this what it is. It's not a fundraiser. It's just a money grab. They're trading their permit uh, for 12000 bucks. I almost paid that in taxes last year. Certainly, the neighborhoods contributed more than $12,000 to the school budget. $12,000 in a $20 million budget. That's what we're talking about. Okay? That's just one point. You know, the, the, uh, the, the point about the trailers. It's pretty clear in the uh, general zoning laws that, that trailers aren't allowed. More than one trailer is not allowed on a property commercial property or residential property, okay? The Zoning Board of Appeals has to approve any variation on that. That takes three to four months, I think I read. And you're, gonna, you're just going to wave a magic wand and bypass the zo general zoning laws. I mean, I, I don't get it. How, how, could I do that? Can I, be, can I start renting out my place? You know, so... so I mean, I read the stuff and I can't believe it's happening. So, um, uh, you know, the, the employee issue is, is a big issue. Now, we, we, I hear them say, oh, quarries and sorries. Does that, mean, does that mean that the person does not have a criminal <coughs> record? And the answer is no. Right? A car, oh, where's the, uh, can we ask the question to the uh, head of the Fiesta shows? It doesn't mean they don't have a criminal record. It just means they haven't committed a certain kind of crime, I guess. It's, it's a big issue. And, and these people, all day look. And it isn't for four days. It's all day for 10 days. Because they didn't leave till Wednesday, the following week. They must have had some mechanical problems or something. A couple of their trucks didn't leave. And then when they left, the town, official, the town came in and fixed up all the, the grass that they tore up. Okay, the, the, and, and I had pictures, but you know, you, you don't care about that, really. I'm sure they got paid for it. So, so I think if you look at it for what the event is, it really is not what we would consider fundraising. And I'll, and I'll bet you it violates the uh, uh, school use permit, the, the, the uh, tone and tenor of it. Because I read it and it doesn't seem to fit into what, they were, what we're allowing, what the selectmen and the, the town is allowing use of the school. Okay? And it's a horrible event. I mean, they, they, everything is right up against the road. If there were setbacks, they, 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 there was a dumpster. You were there, Norman, last year. There was a dumpster, what was it, five feet from the uh, road, from the curb? I mean, they, they, just, they just come in and dump the stuff wherever they are. So, so, you know, just if you look at Touch a Truck, you look at good fundraising, that's the way it is. One day, raise the same amount of money. This is a, this is a, a, a it's not a good looking thing for the town. It's certainly dangerous. I mean, I live on that street. People have been killed on that street. Accidents happen all the time on that street. And all you're doing is bringing a lot of people from out of town who are looking at it as they're driving by. Um, so so the, the, uh, I, I think you got some big issues here. You know, and, and we are supporters. Remember, the, the, the Swensons, the Pennies, the Bacas, and I, we all lived there before you built the school. Okay? So, so you can't call us NIMBYs. We support the school. I had to laugh because last night, uh, about 12.30, my wife woke up and they're screaming and yelling and music playing over at the high school. She calls the police, okay? It's the first time I think we've ever called. It's, the se it's senior night, I guess. They're camping out in the teacher's parking lot. So, you know, I woke up in the morning and I laughed. I thought it was funny. I didn't know that it kept her up. I slept right through it. So, so you know, big supporters of it, but this is not something that we deserve having dumped on us. For 12 grand? 
on a $20 million budget. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So, I mean, I think I covered what, what, I had, uh, uh, what I had thought, but, you know, I think there's only 10 neighbors, maybe 10. I don't know what the abutter list was. And, 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 you're, and you're you have to make a judgment. It is the sanity of those 10 people, because we can't open our windows, we can't go out. You know, uh, when that music starts, thump, 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 it, it's really horrible. And it's all the time. It's not just an hour here, an hour there. If it were one day, it would be great. But it's not one day. It's four nights and, and a whole bunch of setup. So I, I think it, it, it's just hard. I know it's hard to, to, to protect the, the, the uh, few, the people who don't have a big voting block. But it is your job to look out for us, to look out for the town, and make sure that we're taken care of. Make sure we're protected from this kind of stuff. You all, I, I saw a lot of you over there, and I saw the looks on your face when you saw it last year. I mean, it was not a pretty deal. And, and you know, you can put lipstick on a pig, but you know, it's still a pig. And that's what this is. This is a pig sitting there. Doesn't make us. It doesn't help the town, and it doesn't raise a lot of money. I mean, really, you think about it all this hassle, these meetings for, for that kind of fundraising, PTA can do better. That's what I, that's, so I don't support it. And I don't think they're following the rules. I think the permit came late, and I don't think you should issue it. And I think if you issue the permit, and um, uh, I think you're gonna have some, some problems down the road in, 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 uh, in, in, ma in making that permit good. I think it will create some liability for you, but I don't support it, as you can tell. <laughs> all right? Thank you very much, Mr. Weinstein. <clears throat> Oh, I know you. May I comment as well? Absolutely. Come on. Um, Gary Trendle, 31 Chamberlain Street. Um, <clears throat> I just want to provide a little bit different perspective, and I, I, I certainly can't argue with a lot of Mr. Morningstar's points, but um, a couple things. Um, number one, my kids really look forward to this. Uh, they've been asking about it. They're excited about it. Um, they, they want to attend. So um, there are a lot of people that do look forward to this and, and do enjoy the, the event. Um, secondly, with regards to the lazy fundraising, uh, I think we've all raised a lot of money for this town. I have no problem with lazy fundraising. I mean, the reality is we all work really hard, and certainly that's not as much money as I would have expected it to raise last year, but I just, I think it's, it's, it's fair sometimes that, you know what, maybe there are ways to raise money that, that don't require a lot of work. Um, and then the, the, the third question, I was just curious for the, the police chief if there were any complaints last year or any, anybody that called or, um, I mean, that might be a, a, good, a good judge as to, if there were problems last year, so. Well, no, we actually, actually have to go. Sorry, to the chair. To, to the chair, and, we, and, and that's something, when we get into deliberations, we'll, we will get the same thing. We'll bring up uh, uh, Mr. Morningstar's comments and, and the chief's comments. Okay, But to, Sorry. to be going back and forth would be. Okay, that's fair. And then, and then one last, just, just, a, just a suggestion with regards to the smoking. Um, to me, it's problematic if you try and condense them all in one spot because someone's gonna have to live with that. So to me, just was thinking about one potential solution is just even if there are some, you know, there's, there's two problems. One is the smoking, the second is the smoke, and the second is the cigarette butts. Um, but, you know, maybe it's better to spread them out instead of consolidating them all in one area where they're going impact, to uh, impact one particular homeowner. So that's it. Just wanted to provide that perspective. Thanks for coming up. Anybody else from the public? Hi. Okay, thank you. Amanda Fauché, 39 Chamberlain, and I, I got a, um, a notice about the being a butter in the carnival, but I don't actually remember when I got it. And I can really understand what Mr. Morningstar is saying, because they are really right up front and center to everything that's going on. And I know that you had said that there really aren't any other areas in Hopkinton, but maybe it's kind of late in the game, but try and really try another look around. like maybe on Fruit Street or, um, I don't know, I'm not really sure where, but um, I can see why they would be very upset. I mean, it's really not very far from their front door. Um, my kids love it and look forward to it as well, but maybe there's another area that could be looked at at some point. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, thanks for coming up. Okay, anybody else? Okay, Chair, let a motion to, uh, do you want me to come over to side your this, yeah. yeah, I have a response. I, I, did, I did text town council, uh, and his response for now, the board may proceed. The statute does not require notice to abutters at all. The entertainment policy goes beyond what the statute requires. 
Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I would suggest that we do not close the public hearing just yet. Okay. I think some valid concerns have been raised, and I think it would be ideal maybe if we talked a little bit about it, got some public safety input, and that way, if the public has any other comments they want to share, they still have the opportunity to do so. Because once we've closed the public hearing, we're done with the public, and then we deliberate <coughs> locally and make a decision or not make a decision. So I'd rather not cut it off yet, if that's okay. With, okay, with so you want to bring up, want to bring up, oh, thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. He says, uh -oh. He says, uh -oh. I'm his wife, Cindy Morningstar. Um, I had, uh, and I will say to everybody here that my children love the carnival too, but they also like to go to sleep at night. Uh, it's very unnerving to have a large group of <coughs> strangers across the street from your house and walking up and down the street in front of your house at all hours of the night mm -hmm. for 10 days to two weeks. I'll just say that. Um, I would just like to ask if Elmwood School uh, Field had, or not Elmwood School, but the uh, Hopkins School Field had ever been considered as a site. I know they all love it to be up front and center, uh, but that field is huge and hard. There's plenty of parking down there, and any neighbors are pretty darn far away from where the event itself would be. So since that topic came up, I thought I'd ask that question. Excellent. Um, yeah, okay, sure, why don't you come on back up, and then, we get, then we'll, we'll, we'll ask the Chief some of those questions, and we'll just try and get everybody's questions. Um, we did look into the Hopkins School field last year, um, but because it would be during um, part of, it would be during the school day, it would just mean that it takes away their recess space, because that field is where the kids go out to recess, and at the time, um, they were possibly looking at having field day that week, so it would impact their ability to have field day. And um, we were, because of the issues that we've had with fields, we were looking to have it on a hardscape as opposed to fe the fields where um, more damage can, can occur. And I did, um, I, I, Elaine probably remembers, I visited her office a few times last year and looking for a location. And um, I can't tell you how many times I called EMC at the time, it hadn't switched over to Dell. They have so many unused buildings over there and large parking lots. I thought that would be so perfect. And it made it to their legal team and they always, I'd always call and I think they stopped taking my calls. Um, they just said, you know, it was, it was being looked at in terms of legal ramifications and they never got back to me. And we looked at the possibility of Fruit Street School but its impact on the um, athletic events at that time. So I, I really did, I really did try to find Another location is just the way our town is set up. We really just don't have a large space like that with, with parking as well um, that would make that possible. Mr. Kamala, a temporary town hall? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of we're, we're tenants. <laughs> and I disagree very much with the statement that it is lazy fundraising. I can't tell you the amount of hours and work that I have put into going through the permit process both this year and, and last year, and I have met already with the police this year, buildings and grounds, the superintendent. I definitely put in legwork for this, and it isn't just about the fundraising, but an opportunity to bring our community together. Every summer I watch Facebook and I see my friends are going to the Holliston Carnival, and they're going to Ashland Summer Days, and to this event and to that event. And I just feel that we really don't have a community event like that here in Hopkinton that, that is, and so I, you know, I, I see it also as an opportunity to bring our community together. Anything else, do you have anything else for I'm interested in hearing from the public safety officials about some of the concerns that the residents have raised. I'm sorry. They could come to the microphone and speak to them directly. Thank you, Chief. So, so you heard some of the some of the comments that came. I, I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Hurst got, got them in, in a in a concise uh, list over there. If you was, could uh, take over. Was there ever uh, any quarry or sore issue brought to you, but last year about any individual or individuals uh, during the con the carnival itself? Yes. No. Were there any incidents during the carnival itself? 
No. With personnel. There was the one, uh, I believe, one call for service, and that was a, a lady who was hit in the head with a sign that fell. Yeah. A lady who was hit in the head with a sign? Yes. Okay. Intentionally or just, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just, <laughs> just right a freak there. accident? <laughs> um, Chief Slam, anything from your perspective? Um, just my, uh, I evaluated the carnival quite a bit. Most of the inspections are through the state. So um, I just went up to watch the state do the inspections. It seemed like it was really thorough in the rides, the generators. Um, so it seemed like the safety part of the carnival itself um, was well organized and well inspected in my opinion. Um, I think the only caution um, I would say if you're thinking an alternate about uh, going into the Loop Road or Hopkins School is I start to worry about access and our ability to access an area if we did run into a problem. Um, the site really solves a lot of my access issues where it is now. Um, you know, I, I understand the neighbors have an impact, so uh, that part I don't have expertise on. But the the site for me to go and provide a service is ideal. Okay, and then the uh, I know this may not be your your jurisdiction or not, but this whole concept of the smoking and people moving around and getting off school property and having a cigarette and dropping it and going back and it's it's a public safety issue that they're crossing the street back and forth nonstop, and they're they're tres not trespassing, but they're in close proximity to private residents' land and so on. How any ideas on how we deal with that? Yes, uh, quite simply, it's a quality of life issue. If if they're out there making noise, infringing on people's property, I'd urge anybody to call the police. We'll have extra pat patrols in the area. Uh, throughout the event and at nighttime, and uh, <coughs> I'll make sure that they'll keep an eye on that situation and keep people off other people's property. Make sure no one's loitering, walking around off property, uh, away from the trailers. A couple more, if I could, Mr. Chair. Sure, uh, how about the trailer uh, village, or whatever Commune. we call it, that, that that they set up? And and I know there's zoning issues specific to that, and we have to sort through those zoning issues. And no zoning issues get made up on the fly, so we got to figure that out. Um, but tell me about the trailer situation last year. Were there any issues there? No, none uh, reported. And my offices, uh, you know, were advised just because it's a uh, not a, a usual occurrence in Hopkinton, but people, you know, spending the night out there to keep extra patrols and keep an eye on the situation. I'm sure, there's no um, disturbances. Okay. And then how about the hours of the event itself? So when is when is the event actually operating? I understand the set up and tear down, and that's got to be annoying because we thought it was going to be a three-day event. It was three days before and three days after. So we could probably talk about that a little bit and figure out how to expedite that or manage that better. But how about the hours itself when the machine, the, 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 the rides are going and the music's booming and all that kind of thing? What, what are the hours of this event? Is there any way to... Have we looked at curtailing that at all? Uh, no, but that's certainly something that would be up for discussion. The hours are 6 to 10 on Thursday, 6 to 10.30 on Friday, and, sa and Saturday is 1 to 10.30, and Sunday is 1 to 9 p.m. Okay. And in that last half hour or so, that 10 to 10.30 slot, is that important, you think, for fundraising, or is that... I mean, any any thirty minute increment we can get peace into the neighborhood is, I think, yeah. valid and yeah. a reasonable thing to consider. No, no, I, 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 I'd certainly, you know, based on the emotional stuff like that, certainly, you know, if you you're not going to be making Saturday at ten o'clock, you know, does it have an impact? Of course it does, but whatever it is, if it you know helps to appease neighbors at the same time, I think it's a concession. We're willing, we'll certainly be willing to, to help out. <coughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know what the answer is. I'm just asking questions at this point. Uh, that was all I had, Mr., that I heard, but maybe there's others, so. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, I just want to, just so people understand how we're going to handle the situation because of uh, the Corey situation where it, it, it might have been someone working that, uh, that may or may have not been a uh, uh, sex offender. Um, we are going to have the detail officers uh, verify all the employees' uh, IDs at the time that they are working and back them up against the uh, Corey checks that were provided to us. And if someone uh, is working there, 
and we don't have uh, any background on them, then obviously they won't be working there for long. Do we agree on that? Uh, through the chair, I would like to um, uh, go on record to say that when I did bring this issue up on the Corey and sorry about the employee, <coughs> it was chiefly was not here when I brought it up, and he did call me about 7:15 the next morning. He jumped on it right away. They, he was not. I don't want anybody in this room, audience, nation that's watching this to think that. He did not take it lightly. He did not. He uh, he jumped on it right away. So I don't want any implications to s to say that I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking that they didn't drop that someone that our police department dropped the bomb because they did not. Do the chair. Yes. Um, question for Fiesta: Do you have any kind of mitigation measures? You do this all the time. Are there mitigation measures? How you orient rides? Any kind of screening? Any kind of fencing or something that could. Uh, mitigate the impact of the neighbors? Uh, well, the part of mitigating was like shifting some of the rides, as I first mentioned uh, from a motion. Probably the, the only other real way to mitigate you know, the noise and some of the sound would be to take some of the semi trailers that you know either are uh, what the ride parts transport on, but they're you know essentially empty trailers during the week. Take some of those to put along you know the, the back side there. Obviously, it doesn't look as pretty as a ride does from the street standpoint, but it would buffer sort of just some of that. It would, it would form a barrier just to prevent some of that noise from carrying through. So that I mean that's, that's certainly something we could you know you know attempt to do. I just can't guarantee that it would be. Well, I, I, but I definitely think it could help. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think we're looking for anything that's 100%, but anything that would that would help. Um, and, and again, just throwing ideas out there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying one way or the other, just what could be done. Um, I, I, I'll say, yeah. um, you know, both statements <laughs> and both sentiments are true simultaneously. Uh, the children think it's great. It's a lot of fun. It, it's been a fun event for the town. And as Mrs. Graziano has said, you do see all these other towns having you kind of say, well, they can have it. You know, why, why couldn't we do this? Um, but the Morning Stars and the other neighbors' concerns, um, you can't argue with the sound, the noise, the disruption. Um, and it's not one day. So th th those are mutually sort of coexisting true statements. And, and the, the conundrum is, is how do you blend those two? Um, you know, the remarks about people out on the street, and, and of course, Chief Lee says, well, if somebody's trespassing on the property, yes, of course. The, the problem is that um, properties like the Morning Stars and the Swensons and all those homes, they're right on the street. Um, it's not necessarily that the people are trespassing. They're on the public sidewalk. They have a right to be there, but they're very close to your home. Um, one thing I wondered about is, although that is a public sidewalk and you cannot prohibit people, would it be possible you know, we have events, marathon events, whatever, where there are certain areas that are blocked off. Would it be possible to block off that strip of sidewalk and require people to be doing their crossings at the two ends and use the sidewalk in front of the high school but per, but create a, a barrier <coughs> along that strip for the residents that they don't have uh, strangers uh, Consistently in front of their home, along with the smoking. I don't know whether that could be uh, that could be blocked or not. We do it for the marathon. We right. Barricades everywhere. Um, that would be one suggestion. Uh, another suggestion to Mr. Um, Nazarula's idea about. I have not seen the carnival. I, I wasn't here for it last June. But I know that you know, with each reduction of hours, you lose some income. With each reduction of rides, you lose some income. But you know, perhaps it, it's great that you've moved some of the more intrusive rides away from the streetscape. But would it? You've got what 84 rides, I think. 
the thought of maybe taking a strip of those rides that are closest to the street and eliminating them in some way so that you do create a little more of a buffer, that, that's, that's one thought. Um, it also occurred to me if the Parmenter property has been willing to work with the Carnival, um, if that be, could be more of the break area for the workers or with respect to their, their smoking, that it at least be kept on the, um, you know, on the public sidewalk on the opposite side of the street to pull that away from, from the neighbors. So those, those are three thoughts I had about providing some barriers to the neighbors along the sidewalks eliminating some of the very close rides to pull it back a little and also perhaps moving that smoking either to the opposite public sidewalk or into the Parmenter's area. Two thoughts. Three thoughts. <laughs> okay. Uh, Chief, um, how many, uh, do we have any paid details that are in, that are in this event during the, during the setup and or breakdown or, and during the event? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, we have, we have several offices working. Okay, great. That's, that was just, I just wanted to make sure that there are people. And we have public, do we also have any EMTs or anything staying by or anything? Not at the school currently. I run heavy staff during that weekend. Um, just the location of the station is in a good proximity to have my staff there. Then, And I do that okay. for some other events. Anybody have anything else for these? So the setup and breakdown point that the morning stars raised i think is a valid one like in my head this was a three or four day event whatever it was thursday to sunday done but i didn't think if they're showing up three days in advance and they're hanging out till wednesday after how can we mitigate that and make it more reasonable so that it's not as long and drawn out an affair yeah i'm, I'm unaware of the, the the three days after part which i am not disputing um but where essentially we're an army on the move and we're going to the next community <coughs> Uh, to get set up and erected for that week. So I'm surprised that we were there till, you know, if we, if we had something until Wednesday, I'd have to look back to see if there was an issue. I don't know if, it was, if there was a tire issue or a mechanical issue that prevented that piece of equipment from moving. Um, but everything, you know, uh, you know, when we closed on Sunday night, we tore down on Monday out of respect to the abutters. We didn't want to tear down on Sunday after we closed because we didn't want to have loud noise after, um, you know, essentially when they're getting ready to go to work the next day. So we um, tore down the, um, the equipment on that Monday morning and started trucking up, trucking out. So it probably went into Tuesday because we were trying to not impact the abutters, you know, doing it uh, at closing time and, and being done at midnight or one o'clock in the morning. Certainly that would be very impactful, you know, to them, you know, unwinding and going to sleep for the night. Um, so. I would have thought that we would have been out by you know that Tuesday, but obviously you know there must have been some equipment that was still there. Um, so you know that can certainly be looked at to address. Um, the, the part about moving in ahead of time, um, unfortunately the rides for the you know safety program and the attention that has to get taken to make sure that everything's erected properly and be ready for the state um, to come in and inspect, it's very difficult to really cut down those <coughs> hours. Um, Again, the only way to really cut some of those hours down would be extending the workday, um, you know, both from a fatigue issue from our employees, but also on the impact of the neighborhood. We're not trying to go into 8, 9, or 10 o'clock at night erecting equipment and making all kinds of noise. We're, we're trying to be good neighbors. We have, uh, you know, we operate 58 events. Um, about 46 of them are in the Commonwealth, and we're always someone else's neighbor for the week. Um, so we, you know, certainly when we hear any concerns, Try to address them to the best of our ability, um, and you know, and then also working within you know the limitations of the event itself. Are you going to be on site during this event? I am. From from delivery of equipment through breakdown, or just during the weekend, or? I know I, I come in and out every single day, so I'm I'm there. I'll be there on Monday as equipment's rolling in. I'm there for you know a good portion of the day to make sure that everything's going smoothly. Um, as Aaron had mentioned, we have uh, you know I have a unit manager that's there full time. He's there for every single uh, hour of it, but I, myself, I'm in and out every single day. Anything else? Mr. Chair, um, so, Mr. Kamala, do these guys, when they're um, setting up, they have to follow the same bylaws, like a construction company. Uh, they can only work certain hours, right? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. That's not the case, though. 
I mean, look at the bylaws for a residential neighborhood. You're not allowed to do anything on Sunday, first of all. And you can't run power equipment between certain hours, which they do, for the whole event. Right, so that's not a true statement. In a red zone residential. Anything else, Mr. Okay. Before should we, um, Mr. Kamala, do you have anything else? Ms. Wright? I mean, Ms. Lazarus, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, perhaps more of an observation and also an acknowledgement of the comments from the neighbors um, that we have to look deeper into making sure that we enforce our zoning bylaws based on some of the comments that have been raised. I have. One quick comment for Mr. Morningstar. I've been trying to think in my head how to put this uh, very lightly. Uh, there are two things in my life I'm afraid of, snakes and dentists. The PTA is not one of them. I'm not afraid of the PTA. I'm not afraid of either. I am afraid of snakes and I am afraid of dentists. You got kids in the school? I do. I do. Thank you. Any time before we close Anything else for anybody else before we close the public hearing? I, I just I have one comment. Um, you know, the schools of PTA, Mrs. Graziano, have put a ton of work into this, and you know, this is a month away, and we've got all our permitting. And I, I you know, I think you're sort of expecting within your fundraising year, this is planned for this year. Um, at the same time, the concerns that have been raised are, as I said, legitimate concerns that I really do think need some consideration. Even the, the return for the money, uh, you know, $12,000 for four nights, that's $3,000 a day. I mean, I've done yard sales that brought in $3,000 in a couple days. So, you know, you start to question the return, so to speak. So it's not, so it's not three days. Well, that's what I'm saying, you know, I know, yeah, um, yeah, so. Would I be allowed to address that point? Well, uh, j just to finish what I was going to say, um, I, I, I would hesitate not this year to let this go forward, but at the same time, I think I would really recommend that for the following year that, you know, we, we the town, your group, give some real close consideration and, and we start to work through some of these issues earlier as to whether, you know, this is something that, that we should continue to do um, I, in future years. I, th I think we'd look at it. But. I just want to address the fundraising. Mm -hmm. um, I have run all the fundraisers for the PTA this year, and I did the same last year. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of incredible organizations in town right now, and that, that, is, that is a positive thing because we are all benefiting from what they are bringing to our it's town. It's competition. <laughs> but it dilutes yeah. the ability to fundraise, sure. and Absolutely. it is extremely hard. And it's not easy getting no. approval for any of the fundraising ideas that you want to bring forward. So I appreciate... Yeah. The fact that you might not see that as a lot, but for the PTA and what we've been dealing with over the past couple of years, that is a large chunk of change. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's really hard to get volunteers to help us run events. And it's this is huge. And, and I don't just see our role as the PTA as fundraising. Mm -hmm. I, I think it the PTA is the Hopkinton Parent and Teacher Association. And I think it is part of our job to bring together the community mm -hmm. that is around and supports these schools and to me this is also a community <coughs> event you just don't see it as just a fundraising event and there were hundreds and thousands of people who came out and enjoyed it last year and I gave to Norman at the start of this meeting a stack of receipts from the letters I sent I do want to know and I very much appreciate their concerns and we are very much willing to work with them in order to um, alleviate some of the concerns. <coughs> but out of the maybe 100 letters I sent, I do want to point out that there's not very many abutters here tonight opposing. I think we received one abutter email that was forwarded to me and, and one real concern here tonight. So when, when we're weighing it, I guess, I, I mean, I heard a lot of comments made that it was a disaster and nobody appreciated it. But I don't see that as the case. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 
you going to get ready to say something, Mr. Hart? Anything? All set? I just want to say I commend you for your activities in bringing the community together. Um, I think that's one of the things that I, I ran on as bringing the community together, and I think that's something uh, that we should all have a chance to, to enjoy together. Um, I would encourage you to work with the neighbors um, yeah. to allay any of these uh, any of these issues because they are real, and um, oh, I, I certainly wouldn't I wouldn't be pleased um, if I were in Mr. Morningstar's position. Yeah. I just want to say that my husband, in no way, intended to diminish your efforts. We recognize that you work very hard to do the things you do, but as you mentioned there are so many fundraisers in town now. I would have to point out that probably 75% of them take place across the street from our house. Yeah. It's endless. So when the big ones come in, the reason the rest of the abutters aren't here is because they're exhausted by it. You come and you speak your concerns, and everybody says, oh, yes, poor you, and then it gets proved. And they're just tired of it. They write letters. They talk to people. And it feels like it falls on deaf ears, and it does. And I will say that there was a carnival when we moved into our house. We've been there 26 years, yes. and they did a carnival on the field, on the grass. Yeah, where the tennis courts used to be. Yes, and the generators were blowing diesel fumes mm -hmm. into my children's bedrooms that night. And the carnivals ended after that because I went and spoke to the person who yep. did the fundraiser, and he said, I don't want to do that to somebody's family. I wouldn't want it done to mine. Yeah. And I would ask all of you, would you want it done to yours? Mr. Chair, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the hearing's closed. Okay. Um, where do you want to start? Mr. Tedstone? No, I mean, I think I've said what I need to say. Um, I'm, I'm uh, confident in the in, the, uh, in Ms. Graziano's motives. I'm confident in the police chiefs and the fire chief and their follow-up uh, mandating public safety. And with those list of contingencies that we came up with, I think if those can be met, met and mitigated, then um, I'm all right. Where we stand. Um, again, you know, I, I, I think going forward in another year we should take a closer look, but for the short term, um, there have been a number of suggestions made tonight which may ameliorate some of the concerns. You're not going to solve it, but I would just ask that the applicant take note of those suggestions and do everything possible working with uh, Fiesta shows to implement some of those ideas. Um, they're certainly not going to solve the problem, but it's a good faith effort and it will um, somewhat in some small small way probably lessen the impact a little bit. So that would be my, my respectful request. Okay. And Mr. Ray, it looks like you, you compiled... Like, oh, well, sorry. I just had a couple of thoughts before we get into what I think might be a motion, frankly. Um, this is absolutely not lazy fundraising. I've never heard that term until tonight, having raised a lot of money myself over the years for various causes, including cancer research, um, by running the marathon, which is not lazy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know Ms. Graziano and how incredibly hard she works on behalf of the town of Hopkinton on so many different issues, and this is one of them, and uh, she works extremely hard too here, so I appreciate your comments, Mrs. Morningstar, to her about that. And uh, to Mr. Morningstar, who I had to head out, um, you know, he taught my sons how to play lacrosse. He taught my sons how to play football. So I hold him in extremely high regard. So this is hard for me. This is really hard for me because I feel a great uh, affinity towards him. Uh, I'm hoping one of my sons actually goes on and keeps playing football in life. But um, he doesn't play lacrosse anymore. So tell Carl that. I can't get over that one. Anyway, um, but I do think it, it, it's in an area of town where they're in a tough spot. In, in, and as difficult as it is for them, uh, with some of the adjustments that I think we should talk about here, uh, I think we can make it better for them, but we're not going to make it perfect at all. It's going to be a tough few days. It was a tough few days last year, and I think it would be a tough few days this year. 
and maybe next year we try to think about this some more about where we could go. I'd like to see the carnival continue to come to Hopkinton because I think it is a great fun event and everybody's kids love it. But I also would like to see if we can at least really as a community and not just put it all on your shoulders. As a community, we help try and find a spot that works maybe a little bit better. So we've got to start a little bit earlier perhaps and we got to engage other people besides you carrying the full weight of this thing, which really isn't fair to you because we all enjoy this thing and we all um, benefit from it. So with that, I would suggest that the Board of Selectmen um, issue a entertainment license and a Sunday license, and Mr. Kamal, jump in on me here if I'm wrong. Board of Selectmen, uh, entertainment license and a Sunday license on behalf of the HPTA to host Fiesta Shows Carnival to be held on Thursday, June 21st from 6 to 10 p.m., Friday, June 22nd from 6 to 10 p.m., uh, Saturday, June 23rd from 1 to 10 p.m., and Sunday, June 24th from 1 to 9 p.m. With, um, with the following conditions. With the, the following, yeah, with, with the conditions uh, outlined here in um it was basically you you actually you did very well mr hardy did you actually read that uh, um with the following conditions so the um uh, all employees would be corey sorry certified and uh uh in accordance with mass general law and 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 uh supported by the police chief of hopkinton uh, the generator locations be as far back from the residential areas as possible. Uh, I know you moved them last year at midterm or once we set up, but get them even further back. So generator locations as far back as possible as a condition. That the trailer locations uh, and, and the trailer village be coordinated with the town manager's office to comply with local zoning requirements. Um, that barricades be erected on the easterly side of Hayden Row Street to prevent undue or unnecessary gathering and smoking, etc., on the east side uh, of the street where residents live. That um, the rides are as moved as far back as possible in the parking lot and the most noisy ones, you know. Think about how you set this thing up. I'm sure you do, it's your business, but please move everything as far back as possible. And the town council confirm uh, that the abutter notification process was within the guidelines expected either by the Board of Selectmen and or Mass General Law. Which we have, by the way, received input tonight that it does, but we just want to make sure. Let's double check that point. Okay. That would be my motion. Mr. Hurt, can I add a friendly amendment to that motion? Depends on who it is. Um, well, it hasn't been seconded yet. I'll second it. Okay. Huh. Good, good move on your part. <laughs> so, I just want to make sure that um, on that, that the working hours of of, uh, of the breakdown and setup of the rides follow what we find to be acceptable for general construction. You know, like we can't have a homeowner or a, a company in there spreading loom at 9.45 at night at their house. So I, wanna, I would like them to follow the same type of guidelines so <coughs> as to not to, to minima, minimally impact the Neighbor's peace of mind. Well, I, I, I this is one of the yeah, yeah, I believe that 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 uh, I don't know if we have to put a condition in of, of a law that actually exists. If we say we have to have to meet all local, okay. all local and state um, bylaws, the laws and bylaws, I think that we're, we're covered there because it's. Uh, I rescind my friendly amendment. It is no longer friendly. <laughs> now it's in, in, in fact, for clarity, Mr. Hayes motion only referenced the zoning bylaws. I think the compliance should be with the zoning bylaws, the town's general bylaw, and any state regulations or bylaws. That's what I was. So that's your friendly so amendment. That's, so that's your friendly amendment, because you seconded it, and I'll include that in my motion, so that's fine. Because that covers the working hours. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> um, so that's the motion. And we have a second. Okay. It's, it's <coughs> any, any further discussion on it? Ms. Mitchell, yeah. Ms. Wright, anything else? Yeah. All set? Okay. Yes, Mr. I have a question, if I could, Mr. Chair, to the uh, applicant. <coughs> uh, so the hours for the break breakdown set up and all that, you're okay with that in terms of how you operate? And yes. It's typically going to be a 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Yes. Uh, that's, what we, that's what we did last year, too, to, on the teardown to accommodate the, the neighbors, so not an issue. So that's going to be Monday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then Sunday license kicks in, which is a separate setup because we give you the Sunday license, but then you're still going to have to have reasonable hours there. But that's when you're operating. Right. And then the same thing Monday, Tuesday. Okay. No breakdown on Sunday. Right. Well, it's there. Yes. Yeah, they run until 9. Right. And then they break down Monday morning. Yeah. Mr. Connell, anything else? Did I miss anything? No. No. Okay. Good. That's right. I'll, 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 this is the last question. We all said mm -hmm. that you're in. Okay. With that, um, all those in favor of uh, the uh, granting the motion to approve the entertainment license for the HPTA for the Fiesta Shows Carnival at the Hopton High School be held on the dates that were mentioned. Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed any abstentions. Okay, carries. Excellent. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, I have uh, I have one more. I, I have one, one thing I failed to, to mention earlier is that uh, back on May 8th, I believe, the, the town of uh, Hopkinton and the town manager uh, um, concluded a contract negotiation and, and a, a new contract with the town manager was signed. Mr. Kamalo, thank you very much for uh, signing back on with us. I appreciate it. Yes. Thank you for the honor. <laughs> It's uh, good to have you uh, staying on board with us. With that, I think now we're going to be um, chair looking for another. We'll start a reorganization. Chair look for nominations for um, the chair position. Mr. Chair, I would like to nominate Claire Wright for the chair position for the Board of Selectmen for 2000, uh, for the next year, 2018-19. Are, are there any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Congratulations. The chair will look for uh, nominations for, I'm sorry, Mr. Kamala. Mrs. Wright takes over the chair. No, no, we'll, no, take, no. It. Okay. Okay. we'll, we'll take it. Okay, thank the, you. Okay, um, if chair would uh, look for nominations for vice chairman. Mr. Chair, I nominate Brendan Tedstone to serve as vice chair for the next year. Second. Any further nominations? Every none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? Congratulations. Excellent. Okay, let's, let's, let's change seats. Yeah, we just oh, oh, oh. This is what we did last year. Does it change? Does it change? It really gives a feel of reorganization this way. Yeah, we just moved one seat. <laughs> Well, Ooh, thank you, yeah. board, for the vote of confidence. And uh, all that remains tonight on our agenda would be future board items. So, do we have suggestions for future board items? Madam Chair, I ask that the Board of Selectmen put it on the uh, agenda where we meet to discuss liaisons whereby we would add an official liaison position to the Board of Boston Athletic Association. Uh, and uh, I would ask that at that time we consider appointing Mr. Catino to serve in that role. Is that a motion? No, it's a request for a future agenda. Okay. I think that's an excellent request. I do too. Mr. Catino did a great job with that marathon the last few years that I've been part of here. Thank you. Well, we can address it more at the time, but um, he's been working to build some strong, solid relationships, and I think that's a kind of a job that should continue. Who, who's the keeper of the future agenda items? Do. Mr. Kamal, so if you could make sure we get that one on there. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Tedstone. Uh, same thing. I'd like to say thank you for the voter conference, for being the vice chair, and I have no 
future items. Mr. Nasrullah. I have no future items at the moment, um, but I'm sure mm -hmm. I'm new here, so uh, the, I have a question, which is, will we have opportunity to add future agenda items moving forward? Every night. Every Excellent. Night. Yep. I will Just have some dinner. coming forward. And I would just like to thank uh, thank everyone for the support for this year. It was uh, I I really in, I enjoyed being chair. It was uh, it was hard work, but it was uh, um, very satisfying. I, I really appreciate the, the teamwork that everybody had and all working together. Mr. Kamalo, you did one for Ms. Lazarus. Thank you very much for your for your support and guidance. It was uh, we got through a, a tough business, a tough uh, budget season, but we did it, and um, the town meeting went very well. And I want to thank the uh, the um, citizens of Hopkinton for supporting me this this past year, and I and I was um, grateful and, and humbled by the uh, by the job, and uh, and I want to thank everybody very very much. And I would like to thank John Catino for the year of fine strong leadership that he's given to the town, and I'd like to again welcome our newest member, Mr. Nasrullah, and our oldest. Newest or newest oldest member, Mr. The cranky old guy in the corner. <laughs> That's years of service, not <laughs> the oldest. not age, uh, so Mr. Hurd. Chairman, thank you. Emeritus, <laughs> once removed, four times <laughs> removed. I just need to know the proper way to address you. I do have one new agenda item. Um, on Saturday, I had the honor of speaking at the Eagle Scout Court of Honor for our latest new Eagle Scout in Hopkinton, um, Cameron William Allen of Troop One. And so we do want to make sure that we contact uh, Cameron and get him to a Board of Selectmen's meeting to honor honor him here. It's the least we can do for him. The least we can do. Mm -hmm. So if there are no other uh, items to discuss, we will entertain a Motion, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I actually can make I'll motions now. That. Would you like to make that motion? That motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I will second that. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>